The Kyrie Irving saga has taken yet another turn, and this is via David Griffin, former Cavs GM, and I emphasize former because of the fuckery that has happened with Dan Gilbert and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Should never have been relieved of his duties, was about to get Jimmy Butler, but what have you. Uh, so the broadcast began with a interesting quote by David Griffin saying this, I think Kyrie's going to end up being traded. Oh, damn. So with that being said, we have to also reiterate that Kyrie Irving has given this list of teams and what have you, but he's still under team control for two years. So it's the ball is in the Cavs' court, obviously. So he then also uh, said a few comments about Ron Harper and how Ron Harper ripped Kyrie Irving. So I don't want to overshadow what David Griffin said, but here's that. Youth, ignorance, I don't really understand what's behind it. Young youth kids, listen, the inmates are in charge. So when the inmates are in charge, nothing but bad things can happen, right? What the fuck are you talking about, man? It's never your team. You play for the front of your jersey. Your name is on the back of it. Hang on. There's this thing called free agency, Ron. And a lot of these players get to decide where they want to go and what team they want to wear on the front. So, yes, they want to win championships. It goes hand in hand, but yeah. So uh, then he also went on to say, when you get a chance to win and a chance to be on a good basketball team, you have to take that opportunity. I totally understand that. That's fair criticism. So here's what David Griffin said. This is a guy, as in Kyrie, who handled the situation exactly like he was supposed to. He went to Dan Gilbert privately, told him that he thought he would be happier somewhere else. The absolute worst thing this guy could have done is pretend to be all in and sink the ship from within. Most guys don't have the courage to do what he did. That's not youth and ignorance. That's a little bit more courage than people give him credit for. So really interesting because he ripped Ron Harper with the youth and ignorance line. But then he also gave some really interesting uh, insights into potentially the correct protocol because, look, fans don't necessarily see this side and they don't necessarily know this side. So is it the correct protocol for a guy to go to the owner, go to the GM and say, look, we've had a great run. I've been with this team for a while. We went to three straight finals. We won one. I want to get out of LeBron's shadow. Please trade me. That's the right thing to do because, as he says, most guys don't have the courage to do what he did. And the worst thing that you could do from a friend perspective, from an associate perspective, from a teammate perspective, is to say that all is well and fine, smile to your face, and then stab you in the back. So I understand what David Griffin is saying. Continuing, this is a guy whose list included really good coaching situations. Brad Stevens and Greg... Wait a minute, Brad Stevens? The Boston Celtics? That is one of those teams on the preferred destinations that we didn't see. We saw Minnesota, we saw New York, we saw Miami. There was Phoenix in the works. Yet with all of these teams, the Spurs were in there. We never heard the Celtics. So for him to say that was really interesting. This is a guy who recruited LeBron. Gordon Hayward, and a host of other free agents. And all of a sudden, LeBron came back, so he was sold a totally different situation than he's actually in, and he worked very well, and he won a championship in. And I see this as him looking for a fit for himself to take the next step in his career. Really good insights as well, because if we remember, Kyrie was on that team his rookie year, sophomore year, when he averaged over 18 points per game, at some points 20 points per game. But when he came in, he was supposed to be the guy. And then LeBron comes, and he rolled with the punches beautifully, took it in stride, and went to three straight finals. So David Griffin is applauding him for that. Continuing on, I think this is a guy who wants to know how good he can be. LeBron casts a very large shadow over an organization, and most of it is really, really positive. You know you're expected to win a championship by way of example, but what that doesn't allow is for a player like Kyrie to test his boundaries a little bit and see how good he can really be, and can I actually be the front man of a team like that? Again, the teams on his list, Gordon Hayward in Boston and Kawhi Leonard in San Antonio, he would be accompanied by other great players, so it's not like he's asking to lead a ragtag bunch. He just wanted to put himself in a position, I think, where he could find out exactly what he has as a 25-year-old entering his prime. If this is what Kyrie sees, and there's no one better to speak on this matter than the GM, former GM of the Cavs, David Griffin, then this is clearly what he wants. He did the right thing by going to the Cavs and saying, look, I want out. I want to start my own. I want to be my own man. I don't want to be known as the guy who had to win with LeBron, even though, I mean, superstars play among superstars in this day and age. Uh, so it's a little jaded. However, for those who are stating, well, Kyrie had his chance. 
when he was a rookie, a sophomore, and even though, as I said, he averaged over 18 points per game. I think 22 was the number in another year. What about that? It's not fair. If he goes to New York, he's already playing with a better player in Kristaps Porzingis than he played with on any of those Cavs teams. No offense. If he goes to Phoenix, he has a young core. If he goes to Miami, he has a young core. If he goes to San Antonio, he has a built-in system. If he were to go to Boston, he's with an NBA. He's with an almost finals-ready team, and he could put them over the hump. I mean, come on. It's, it's not really a fair argument for an 18-, 19-year-old to be looked at in the same light as a 25-year-old in his prime. That's all I'm saying. But the other wrinkle to this that I thought was interesting was uh, Dave McMenamin, who was on this panel, said Cleveland, without LeBron playing the last three years, were something like 4-22. and Yeah, that, that speaks a little bit more volumes. However, not to totally defend Kyrie, but he was 22 at that time, and we don't know who else didn't play in those games. So even though Kyrie wants to be his own man, this is not the day and age in the NBA where one player can win. You need help. You need that aid. So wherever Kyrie goes, it seems like he's going to get that aid. But the main point that we're driving home in this clip is that we don't know if the relationship can be salvaged between LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. And Kyrie so badly, so badly, wants to create his own legacy and this saga that he can win without LeBron. He wants it. It's very clear. The writing is on the wall. The question is, what do the Cavs do? Lastly, I tried thinking of like love-hate relationships and if that relationship could be salvaged. You got to remember, Reggie Jackson and Billy Martin with the New York Yankees despised one another, yet they won together. Dennis Rodman was on the bad boy Pistons when they ran into Michael Jordan in the playoffs uh, and even in the regular season. They put aside their differences a little bit later in Rodman's career, joined the Bulls, they won. So, can can this relationship become unstrained? It's tough, man. It seems like Kyrie wants out so badly and LeBron is a little egotistical that now he would want him out. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, get at me on Twitter, at Rick Strom. Leave a thought in the comments section below and subscribe to 2 Sports.